Hello, today I'm gonna talk about uh, this one, this ZTW Beast Pro 300 Amps ESC. It's kind of new on the market, it came out uh, during the last part of 2018 and uh, it is a big ESC, it's um, um, a lot bigger than the Hobbywing Max 5 or the Castle ESCs and uh, it's uh, made for those a bit uh, heavier cars like this one this is a four wheel drive MCD uh, W5 it's about 18 or 19 kilograms and four wheel drive uh, this type of car uh, ESCs like the Max 5 um, or the Castle ESCs tended to um, have some uh, problems with uh, especially heat is a problem since uh, those cars uh, is so heavy when you drive continuously um, you can, from what you can see here the ESC is a big one it's uh, yeah it's uh, quite high uh, I can compare this to the Hoverwing Max 5 and you will see the difference especially in height okay also in weight this weighs 500 grams something okay uh, I've been running this for about two hours now in this car and uh, it has uh, generally worked well uh, the only big issue I've had is the uh, switch sometimes uh, doesn't turn off the ESC when you're finished so you have to unplug the ESC connectors instead. Uh, it's not a big problem, but it's annoying on an ESC uh, in this price range. I think it shouldn't be like that. And I, <laughs> but uh, well, it's manageable. Uh, one th one interesting thing about this ESC is this: you have those uh, fan intakes here, and you actually have a fan down here that sucks the air in here and it blows out the air during the back uh, in the back of the ESC uh, also you have this uh, big fan on top so the cooling should in theory be very good and from um, my experience so far heat has been absolutely no issues but um, then I've been driving this in the cold Swedish winter, so it's too early to tell really. But uh, the first indication is that this is a lot better than the Max 5 in that respect. Okay. Um, well, if you talk about drivability, I think this is uh, primarily you should consider this an 8S ESC. Uh, on 12S it's a bit jerky and I've also read something on the internet of those ESCs failing. I have tried running 12S and it has worked well. And the car is very fast on that, of course, since uh, this motor would rev something like 35, 36,000 RPMs uh, with uh, 12S. And then the car makes upwards of 120 probably kilometers per hour. Uh, but 8S is good power, the EAC is quite smooth, ex ex except the, the first meter from standing still, then it can be a bit jerky. Uh, I have some driving videos, uh, if you look on the, uh, down in the description, there are links to some driving vids on my YouTube channel. Uh, I have one of them, for instance, when I drive indoors on a narrow track then you can see the drivability of this ESC is quite good actually uh, also the programming it's simple you use um, a program card that's very similar to the Hobbywing ones uh, but uh, this one has actually slightly more programming uh, um, options than the Hobbywing for instance you can um, uh, adjust the motor timing and you can also adjust uh, uh, reverse and uh, forward speed in more steps than you can do on the Hobbywing otherwise it's exactly like a Hobbywing ESE 
so it works good. Uh, and it's easy since you don't need to have any special cable. The cable is included on the ESC. This is the programming cable. I've just tied it up here. I will do it. Um, I will do some more permanent solution for this uh, later. But yeah, you just plug it in and start up the ESC, and, and it will work. No need for any apps or anything. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, finish this by. Uh, starting up the ESC and show how it performs. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn on my transmitter and um, okay, and I plug in this battery connector and I turn the ESC on. Okay, so the sound is from the motor, there is no sound in the ESC, which, which is kind of strange, because almost every other ESC I've seen in this size has that. Okay, now it's on. It, I run the servers on the internal back. I have a dual setup, and the ESC seems to handle that very well. This is 7.4 volts. And uh, I've been driving this for two hours like this without uh, any problem. Okay, so the first meter up to this speed, this is maybe like four kilometers per hour or something. It's kind of a, it jerks, but then it's then it's fully linear, as you can hear if you listen to the sound. It's very smooth actually. This is better than the Hobowing Max 5 for instance or any castle systems I've seen. So that is good. Reverse, it's the same. The first the first KPH is jerky, then it's better. Okay. I put it on the floor. You can see. Oh, this is a heavy car. So you have to kind of carefully tap the EC when crawling with it. Uh, but it's not an issue of course because this isn't an EC for a crawler, it's an EC for a car for bashing or for the track. And uh, the mid-range is very smooth and uh, everything above like 5 km per hour is very smooth. So it's not a problem at all. Okay, so now I just turn it off. Okay. Ah, good. Uh, now you can see what I was talking about earlier. The turn off switch, it doesn't work. Again. This maybe happens once, one time of ten. And uh, of course it's not a big issue, but annoying. So, I have to unplug the batteries. Okay, and then it shuts off, of course. If you summarize this, it's a good EEC for the value, I think, since it costs less than half of any competitor in this uh, 300 amp segment. Uh, if you need an EEC for a heavy four-wheel drive car, uh, I think this is the best option car uh, currently. Uh, the next step would be an MGM, and th they cost maybe twice, sometimes even three times what this cost and uh, of course they're probably good but yeah this works very fine so uh, I would recommend it I just hope it will last long as well I've driven two hours now and I will drive this the entire season in both my fifth scale electric cars so I will have more information later in the season okay I hope uh, I gave you some useful information, see you next time.